<laughs> Breakfast. Sam. Hey. Patty Spetzels or you're on the loo. Say to Derek it was his birthday on Friday. be out the back doing the upgrade stuff, come on. One, two. Good morning. It's funny how everybody's split towards the radiators. There must be more warmth over there. It is uh, so good to see you this lovely morning. It's a bit warmer, which is nice, isn't it? It's I enjoyed my little walk to church this morning, thinking I'm glad it's not freezing. Uh, Hannah. How's the dips been going? The other day I thought of you because it was Baltic and I was like, poor Hannah, how's it going? Have you missed a day? <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, so you didn't go yeah. in? Okay. Right, right. Just... Uh, just recall how cold you've been this week and think of poor Hannah in the sea. Poor, poor Hannah. Oh. 
do you get home and have like burn your face off in a hot shower? <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, if if you don't know, Hannah's raising money for her trip to Guatemala in uh, for four months, and uh, you will notice on the back the church has made their donation. So thank you, everybody. There's a, a letter of receipt. Uh, the church donated in total nine hundred and fifty pounds. Uh, towards Hannah's uh, mission trip to Guatemala. <laughs> and so um, so what, you two-thirds raised? I think she's quite healthy. Bit more? Bit more? Awesome. And when do you go? 7th of March. Okay, so there's, if you still feel generous or, you, you know, you win the pools. Does anybody ever play the pools anymore? You remember that, Margaret, the pools? I've not, I've not heard of anybody playing the f- pools. Have you heard the pools, Patsy? Well, yeah. <laughs> A maze? What's that? Maze. Don't, never mind. Never mind. So uh, my point being, there's still time between now and March, if you feel a little bit generous, um, to cough up a little bit more. Because I think anybody who's jumping in the sea in January is nuts. And, uh, pardon? Yeah, last year. Uh, but I finished on Boxing Day because it was cold. Uh, it was horrendous. <laughs> it was absolutely horrendous. For some time, it's enjoyable. There's a point. It's not enjoyable anymore. And you think, I'm stupid. Now, I'm not saying that you're stupid, Hannah. Shut up, Liam. <laughs> Anyone, welcome to Hope Community Church. And we'll... Um, We'll get on now, shall we? Now's a good time to transition <laughs> into... Um, you're not stupid. <laughs> you're brave. You're brave. Uh, you have hopefully received a leaflet. Hello, Oscar. You're looking taller, sat on the chair there. Hello, mate. Um, th- there's some there's information on the bulletin and uh, all that you need for this week. Just a reminder, the Hub is open four days a week now, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and this week was really busy, actually, so it's great. Uh, Come and support the Hub uh, as much as you can, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, um, half past ten till two o'clock. On that, we would love to see the Hub open on a Saturday if you have a couple of hours a month that you could spare on a Saturday, can you come and speak to us? And we'll try and get a, a rotor going, kind of a five or six week rotor, where we you may only be helping out for a couple of hours every six weeks or something like that. So we can open it up on a uh, Saturday morning as well. That would be awesome. Um, just for your information, prayer space is on tomorrow at 11 o'clock. Tuesday, we started How to Be Unsuccessful, and it was a really good evening with some really, really good discussion, and I was so thankful leaving uh, and and appreciate all you guys turning up. Um, I can't remember what we spoke about, but we did speak about something, Um, and it was where we align our values, what it looks like to be successful, and how people uh, look at us when we follow a calling rather than uh, success or, you know, all those kind of things. So it was a great time. Come and join us Tuesday, half past seven. Um, and also, you will see on the back of your bulletin, there is a uh, face plant into the carpet. Uh, there is a uh, week of prayer and fasting starting Sunday, the 4th of February, at our encounter evening in and then running through till Sunday, the 11th of February, which will be our morning service. I am halfway through producing a prayer guide for you to pick up, uh, hopefully, in a couple of weeks' time before it starts, so probably next week. I need to get my act together. Uh, That will guide you through the week as well. So we'll be praying on the evenings together as a church, but also there'll be some stuff for you to kind of prayer through each day, Um, and uh, some information on, let me take that, Oscar. Uh, uh, There'll be some information on fasting as well, which um, hopefully some of you will get involved in. Uh, So keep your eyes out for that. Um, 
just back to the hub, uh, I was uh, invited along with uh, Roger and Fiona. So some of you have known, uh, we've had quite a lot of students here at different times filming, putting a, together, a, uh, there's a documentary that is, is four or five minutes. Um, so they were like film students. Uh, and then we've had um, about 20 social media students, which is a thing, apparently. And um, they've been putting together all these videos and stuff. And we went to, it was like Dragon's Den, going in and they were showing us these pictures. And so we, we were shown four presentations by, by four different groups of students at the university. And I was overwhelmed by the, uh, the work that they'd put in, but also actually the impact that we'd had on them as individuals. They all said that they were just, you know, it was just another project at first, but when they came and they met some of you guys, uh, and they, they were seeing the good work that the hub had been doing, that they were left really impacted by it. So I want to thank you if you took some time to be interviewed. Um, keep your eyes out. We've got so much content to put on the hub's social media now. And um, I, I actually want to do the course. I really enjoyed it. I kind of listening to all the stuff. And um, I was left really interested in what they were doing. Uh, did you know... The most popular day to you, the most popular day for social media is a Thursday between nine and two. Learn that? Yeah, I know. Yeah, most people are on the toilet at work. <laughs> That's what they're doing. Um, but anyway, we we uh, we learn a lot actually, and so um, they they've all put this work together and they promised to boost the traffic by 50% by May and all these kind of things. And they did loads of research and it was quite eye-opening. Um, so it was really good to be part of. But what, what I was more happy about was the way that we have impacted their lives. And um, that was something good. Shall we stand? Is it uh, Ian and Jenny here? Are you, uh, were you going to be doing it anyway? Okay, I thought they were, okay, never mind. Fret not. <sighs> so, unfortunately, last week, um, uh, unfortunately, last week, our uh, sermon, everything else recorded, but just as I began to speak, the face mic decided not to work through the live stream. So, there was no uh, uh, upload last week. I will be recording the message again uh, today and uploading it as a podcast. Um, and we kind of continue our series of going deeper. And this this week, we're going to look at how uh, uh, the perspective that we hold of ourself affects us, affects our relationship with God, affects our relationship with others, and ultimately affects our spiritual growth. So our perspective, our self-image, our self-esteem. And I was reminded of Psalm 139, which many of you will know and we hear all the time, but it's, it's like his number one hit, it's the Psalm number one, and, and it just speaks of intimacy, it speaks of relationship, it speaks of the God of the heavens knowing each one of us as his children. It says, Lord, you have searched me and known me. When I read those words, I immediately feel so close to God because his word says he searched me, so I, I can't hide away from him, and he knows me up until this point today. It says, you know when I sit down and when I rise up, you discern my thoughts from afar. You search out my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. This is the God of the heavens who is walking faithfully beside me. Even before a word is on my tongue. Behold, O oh Lord, you know it all together. You hem me in behind and before. You lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high. I cannot attain it. Where shall I go from your spirit? Or where shall I flee from your presence? It goes on. There's, it's a great psalm. If you 
ever need reminding of who you are, Psalm 139. How precious to me are your thoughts, O God, how vast is the sum of them. If I would count them, they are more than the sand. I awake and still I am with you. I'm aware that we all bring life with us. Every Sunday we bring so much more. We bring our stories to God. And our stories affect our relationship with God in so many ways. But I want you to know this morning as we set out together as church that he is with you. And he's close. And he knows. And he sees. And he's for you. He's not against you. And he understands you. And he delights in you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father, that we are drawn into your presence this morning. And that, Lord, we don't need to perform right now. You're not going to judge us on the shoes that we wear. You're not going to judge us on the state of our hair. Lord, your arms are open wide this morning to your children. And we just simply come. We just simply come with an open heart and open hands to receive, Lord, all that you have for us this morning. We pray, Holy Spirit, that you would minister to our hearts, that you would minister to our minds, that you would bring peace, Lord, where we need peace. And that you would just begin to speak those words over us again and again and again. I know you, I'm for you, I love you, you are mine. I know you, I'm for you, I love you, You are mine. I know you, says the Lord. I'm for you, says the Lord. I love you, says the Lord. And you are mine. And that's why we celebrate this morning. That's why we worship this morning. That we are part of his family. That we are children of the King. And we get to delight in him this morning. And so we're going to sing. We're going to celebrate Feel free to dance if you feel like it. But let's worship Jesus this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. Are you happy? Are you good? Come on. Judging our defendant, suffered and crucified. Forgiveness is in you. Descended into darkness, you rose in glorious light. Forever seated high. I believe in God the Father. I believe in Christ the Son, I believe in the Holy Spirit, our God is free and one. I believe in the resurrection, that we will rise again, for I believe in the name of
us more strength as our labors increase. To added afflictions he offers more mercy. To multiply trials he multiplies peace. When we have exhausted our store of endurance, when our strength has failed and the day is half done, when we've reached the end of our earthly resources, our Father's forgiving is only begun. Our Father's forgiving is only begun.
Depths of the
Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Keep playing, guys. You know the depths of my heart, and you love me the same. You know when I've been at my worst, and you love me the same. You know me when I've been at my best. And you love me the same. You know me. The God of the heavens and the earth. Who breathed life into being. Knows the depths of my heart. And loves me the same. He has a purpose for my life. He has a plan for me he cares for me you are amazing God thank you Jesus Lord I pray that we would be able to fathom, comprehend, understand, Lord, the depth of your love for each one of us, who we are because of you, that we would see ourselves, Lord, through your eyes, that we would begin to understand how you love us. And why you love us. And what that means. Thank you, Father. You know the depths of my heart. You love me the same. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus.
for you formed my inward parts. You knitted me together in my mother's womb. I praise you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works. My soul knows it very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was being made in secret, intricately woven in the depths of the earth. Your eyes saw my unformed substance. In your book were written every one of them. The days that were formed for me, when as yet there was none of them. How precious to me are your thoughts, O God. How vast is the sum of them. If I would count them, they are more than the sand. I awake and I am still with you. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. And see if there be any grievous way in me. And lead me in the way everlasting. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Lord, our hearts respond to these truths today. Lord, we're glad. We're thankful that when we are reminded of these truths, Lord, that we, Lord, we know you. We see you. We're aware of you. Working out your plans and purposes for us, Lord. Seal, Lord, these truths on our hearts by your spirit, we pray. Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God is good. That was lovely. Boom. Boom. Um, a few minutes before we kick a chil the children out and we continue in worship. Just anybody to come and remind us of what God's been doing. Maybe something you want to give thanks for. Feel free to come and share. Just thankful for 16, 17 men last night eating curry in the name of Jesus. It was a really nice time. Some good fellowship, some good food. Thank you, Mohan, for your great cooking. It was appreciated. No one makes a kebab like Mohan. And Charlie's efforts were good. Hannah's efforts. Sorry, Hannah. Hannah. <laughs> <laughs> you did a great job of bringing it, Charlie. Thank you. <laughs> but it was good, yeah. It was good. And a positive start to um, the new year for the men in this church. And I'm encouraged that the ladies will be gathering as well soon on the 10th of February for breakfast. And um, it's positive. We need those relationships. And let me remind you men in your triplets to be thinking about gathering with your triplet in the next couple of weeks. Sending your photos into the WhatsApp group so we can celebrate and hold you accountable at the same time. Um, and yeah, let's continue how we go on. Are you edging towards the front, Rog. Derek, hang on a minute. Come here, Derek. Come here, young Derek. Young Derek. This man was 79, 78 years young on Friday. I hope I'm as young as Derek is when I'm 78. We're, we're so appreciative of this man, aren't we? Let, let's show that by singing him a song, shall we? You are my sunshine. I'm only joking. Everybody, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Derek. Happy birthday. Yay. 
Yes, thank you. Um, I've had a great birthday, and um, I had 14 cards, which is amazing. Um, I was waiting one to come from Australia, but like he says, he doesn't send cards, so I wasn't expecting it, but it would have been nice. But never mind, I can get over that. But thank you for uh, Glynis. I've got my lovely new pullover on. Whoa! And my socks. Whoa! <laughs> and I'm, well, yeah, maybe. <laughs> but, you know, the Lord's so good, isn't he? And I just want to give him all the praise. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Derek. Come on, Dodge. Um, I just want to thank Fiona, who's not here, bless her. She's not well. She's curled up on the sofa, recovering from this COVID. And it's her birthday tomorrow, so I would love it if we could all just sing a happy birthday to give her a, a boost, because she would love to be with you guys today. Okay. Rendition. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Fiona. Happy birthday to you. Yep. Um, <laughs> okay, on another note, <laughs> on another note, we want to start um, uh, repairing this wonderful, or restoring this wonderful chance of an American pool table that we have in the back. So I'd love some guys, volunteers, to get behind it, ladies, whoever, to just start doing a bit of wood prep. Maybe take one leg home each. I don't know. We can all chat about it and get some momentum behind it, and then we could get this thing going perhaps in another month's time. So that's my job. Okay. Anybody? Yeah. I mean, they're big legs. <laughs> they are big. Yeah, huge. That's four of them. And uh, yeah, come and come and grab one. Uh, good, 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 good. Our little dear ones uh, can flee through the to the door on my left. David, is the is the speaker on in the crash? <laughs> David, he's ignoring me. <laughs> Let's uh, let's continue our worship. We're going to take up our offering as well uh, in the next uh, few songs. While our children and young people, speedy, way, they to cook some biscuits. Yes. see we've been having a great time on a Wednesday night with our children a few new faces joining us and it's still such a privilege just to be able to sit and uh, get to know them as families and some of the kids man they's just they're lovely they're trouble but they're lovely and just so thankful that we we are where we are I, I really am I really am and we get to be part of what God's doing Father, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your mercy that flows like a river every day in our lives. Lord, help us to be more present. Lord, help us to be more aware of the, the needs around us and to be your hands and feet, Lord, so that your mercy would flow into those around us, Lord, through us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's worship. Thank you. 
Thank you, Lord. Everything I need is in you. Lord, whatever is in front of me today, tomorrow, this week, this month, this year, everything I need is in you. Your mercy flows like a river. Thank you, Jesus, that you are enough. Look, Lord, there is nothing that this world can offer me that I don't find in you. Lord, you are authentic, you are real, you are genuine. You, Lord, you are truth. And this world will offer me so many, Lord, so much lies, Lord, deceit, fake, temporal. Lord, I could go chasing those things and find nothing at the bottom of it, Lord. But when I go chasing you, Lord, I find everything I, I need. You are enough. You are enough. And there is no turning back, Lord. I press on towards the goal, Paul says, that is found in Christ Jesus. The cross before me, the world behind me. No turning back. No turning back. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, that you are enough. And all God's lovely, happy, cheerful people said, Amen. Amen. Thank you, worship team. Why don't we say a quick hello to those around us before we get going with our message this morning? Tom, is this... Is it working on there?
Good, 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 goody, good, good. Take a seat as time is slowly going. I wonder if we will ever see Kevin take his coat off. The cross before me, the world behind me. Is it all good? Okay. I am um, Tom. I'll use I'll use my phone for the slides. Have a seat. The cross before me. Grab a seat, guys. Come on. You're like my children, I need to tell you about 20 times. <laughs> the world behind me. Good. So, week three. Deeper three. Deeper. We are looking at this whole theme of going deeper. And uh, started at the start of the year. Uh, with that picture and the, those words in Ezekiel 47 about going ankle deep to knee deep to waist deep to neck deep. And, and we're continuing that thought, thought of, of going deeper and we'll, we'll look at some disciplines, we'll look at some areas that we can go deeper later on as we go. But I, I want to just kind of wrestle with this whole thought of going deeper over the next few weeks and what it what it what it means for us as people, uh, uh, some of the challenges, some of the practical things that we can do. Because I, I, I think we all want to grow this year, don't we, in some shape or form, whether that's um, who we are as individuals, whether that's in our calling, whether it's in going deeper with gifting or in spiritual disciplines. And, you, you know, let's not, let's not set ourselves stupid goals um, but realistic things, and maybe you just want to grow deeper in your prayer life. Maybe you just want to grow deeper uh, in, in, in your gifting and, and, and begin to discover that a little bit more, whatever it is. There are, there are things that propel us. There are things that accelerate us. There are things that hinder us. There are things that set us back. There's all kinds of things that will get in the way of each one of us going deeper. And last week we set out that actually going deeper first and foremost is a choice. We have a choice. We make a choice. It's a choice that actually we discovered last week is a, is a commandment that we receive from, from God to be disciples, to continue learning, observing. And as we journey deeper, God helps us and ultimately we receive his blessing for the growth that happens within us. So our, our, our faith journey of being a disciple, it doesn't, it shouldn't stay stagnant. Stagnant water has nothing coming in and nothing going out. It becomes a dirty old pond. We don't want to be stagnant disciples. We want to have something coming into us. His word, his truth, his goodness, his spirit, fellowship, relationship, and we want something coming out of us so that we will remain healthy, whether that is unforgiveness, whether it's bad habits, whether it's more practical choice, uh, uh, choices with our time, whatever it is, we don't want to be stagnant. But still many believers make little progress in their relationship with God, and it when, when you see someone, I, I'm so excited when people come through the door because of the, the, the potential that I see in them, the potential that I see each one of us have, the potential that God has placed inside of you. And nothing saddens me more to see somebody not living in that potential, to not see that their best life being lived in God. But so many believers become stagnant. Their character doesn't develop. Their roots don't go anywhere. The gifting that God places inside of them isn't, ye isn't used. And, and what you find is that years pass by with little growth 
Indeed, if, if any growth. And as someone who has tried to encourage people along the way, I, I, I'm convinced that there are many areas that affect us. There are many things that affect us in this lack of progress. But one of the biggest is how we actually view ourselves. One of the biggest things that hinders our growth is our own self-esteem. Low self-esteem causes, causes us to underestimate our potential. The God-given potential. And that actually becomes a hindrance in our efforts to grow. You may have heard that self-esteem before. But let's, let's have a look at it. How does it affect our spiritual growth? Well, self-esteem very simply is our internal feelings and evaluation of ourselves based on our perceived self-image. How we see ourselves every day. Who we say we are. Who we say we are. Our self-image and self-esteem are one and the same, based predominantly on the feedback we receive as children. Those formative years. This feedback may come straight from our parents, but also important figures around us. And what we hear is often reinforced by what we tell ourselves. You are your greatest preacher. You preach to yourself more than anybody else in your life. And so what is your sermon? What are you saying to yourself? Healthy self-esteem is nurtured by our childhood experiences, our relationships that we have with people. When we receive praise, when we are listened to and spoken to with respect and we're given attention and hugs and love, it builds us up. When we achieve success in sports or school activities, how many healthy relationships we have with those around us. How many trustworthy friends are in our life when we grow up. Low self-esteem happens when children are abused or harshly criticised, ridiculed, ignored. When there's unbelievable expectation placed upon them to be perfect all the time. You go, girl. People with low self-esteem received the messages that when they failed in tests and sports and in life in general, that they were complete failures because of that. That, oh, you, you failed your GCSEs, and well, you're rubbish. You're rubbish. A dear friend of mine at school was made to stand in a bin in the classroom because he failed a test. A teacher made him stand in a bin and told him that he was rubbish. It goes in. It speaks to the depths of who we are. And it's powerful. When we have low self-esteem, you're more likely to experience depression and anxiety. Relationships can be difficult. Low self-esteem can impair your performance in jobs and academic-wise, and it can lead to underachieving and an increased risk of drug and alcohol abuse. And what you find is it becomes cyclical because these negative consequences themselves begin to reinforce the, the negative self-image that we hold, and we can take a person into a, in a downward spiral of lower and lower self-esteem and destructive behaviour. For some, it can take a lifetime to turn things around. But as always, as always, 
things can turn around a lot quicker when God is involved. I remember rolling up to rehab in September 2006, absolutely convinced that I was worthless. Convinced that I was just dirt off your shoe because I looked at my life, I looked at the mistakes I made and, and, and they led me down a place where I, I didn't want to live and I, I tried to end my own life. I tried to hang myself when I was 16. I, I tried to overdose when I was 26. When I got to the end of everything that I'd tried and I'd failed yet again and I, I was convinced, you're better off dead, Liam. This life, this world is better off without you. There is no point in your life. And I remember walking into Willardine Farm, absolutely convinced that I was worthless, that my life was pointless, that there was no meaning and there was no purpose. Everything that I touched, I destroyed. Every person's life that I came into contact with, I hurt. I couldn't see any good in me. But then God got involved. See, when our eyes are open to God, we begin to understand that we carry something of God in each of us. Each one of us. Genesis 1 tells us that, we, 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 that, that we're made in his image. That we are image bearers of God. And not only were we made in his image, but we were made to exercise dominion over creation. We have a purpose. We have a mandate over our lives. We have a purpose, God-given purpose. And then we begin to grasp just how much God loves us. And we begin to realise our worth. You only have to look through scripture and there's a tons and tons and tons that speak about all of this. But here's a few. John 3.16 For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. For God so loved you. You're the world. God so loved you that he gave his only son that if you believe in him you will not perish but you will have eternal life. 1 John 4.10 In this is love. Not that we have loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. That's a very big word. Propitiation. But he put us in place. Jesus took our place. While you were at your worst. When I was sat outside a post office waiting for people to rob Jesus still loved me and died for me. Worst moment. There are a few. And after, every now and again, I take myself back to those moments. Jesus loved them. Romans 5, verse 8. But God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Whatever your worst is, Wherever that may be, whatever you were doing, Jesus died for you. And we know that because of what Jesus has done. We no longer have to carry the badge of sinner, but of saint. We swap that. I'm no longer a sinner. My, I, I identify as a saint. We should have badges. Just, you know, do you know, you go into some some little coffee shops now and they have thee and they and thee and thou and he and she and we and woe and all that kind of stuff. We should just have saint. Be quite good, wouldn't it? Saint. I identify now as a saint. How powerful would that be? We are being changed and we are now loved as his Children, 1 John 3, verse 1, see what kind of love the Father has given to us that we should be called children of God. And so we are. 
The reason why the world does not know is that, is, is that it did not know him. I don't have to find my identity in my criminal record now. And every, every offence that I look on there, I can see where I was and how broken I was and the things that I were doing. And, and they're not good. They're really not good. But my identity is not on my criminal record and my past list of mistakes and my failures, whatever that may be, and the, the words that people spoke over me. Be careful. My identity now says that, that, that the, 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 the Father has given to us that we should be called children of God. I am a child of God. I'm not a recovering drug addict. I'm not in recovery. I've recovered. I, I fully believe that the day you l begin a, a relationship with Jesus, you are not an addict anymore. You're recovered. You're a new creation. Each one of us, we're new creations. Whatever has been spoken over you, over your past, does not matter because the moment you let Jesus into your life, you are a child of God. That is who you are. And all these assurances are enough to begin to battle our low self-worth. And when we realise we are always living in grace, his mer I love that, his mercy flows like a river. I love it. I love it. And when we realise that we're living in his mercy and grace and being forgiven when we sin, it just releases ourselves and sets us free from so many things. 1 John 1, 9 to chapter 2, verse 2. If we confess, if we confess our sins... He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. My little children, I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. He is the propitiation for our sins and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. That means that when I entered magistrate's court, that Jesus was stood, stood with me. And he said, Liam, you can go out that door. I've got this. That when I was sentenced to pris in prison in Crown Court, that those words that were spoken over me by the judge, they went straight over my head onto Jesus. He took my place. Does that make sense? He's the propitiation. He took my place. And so all that guilt and shame that was supposed to be on my shoulders, he carried that onto that cross. So those negative words that people have spoken over me when I was a kid, they go on his shoulders, not mine. I don't need to carry the shame of those words. They're on his shoulders. That's why I love Jesus. And when you begin to understand that, it does something to us. It sets us free. The knowledge that we are helped by God's spirit, that we are loved by God's family, that we will never be left or forsaken is powerful. Nothing will change a person like the knowledge and understanding of God's love. Nothing. Because if we continue to walk with low self-esteem, our, our spiritual growth is hindered. If we, if we wear those badges of guilt and shame, people's words, our negative experiences, if we wear them constantly, if we live in them constantly, our spiritual growth is hindered. Because people don't believe that they can grow. You say something like, I could never do what they do. You compare yourself to other people. And that's a trap in itself. But when you carry this baggage, when you live in that, you compare and you, I can't do that. I can't do that. Your motto, your greatest sermon is, I can't do that. I can't do that. I'm not worth it. I'll never be able to do that. I'm not capable. I just can't do it. And it's almost that these words just they make you roll over in defeat before you've even tried. 
like getting into a boxing match and throwing in the towel straight away. Sometimes, sometimes you see poor self-esteem flow out from one individual. And what it does is it flows into a group. It flows into a community. It flows into a culture. And you hear things like, well, we're, we're just a small church and it, you know, nothing ever happens here. It becomes toxic. And it all prevents individuals and it prevents corporate spiritual growth. But when we have a good, healthy self-esteem, our spiritual growth is enhanced, it's propelled, it's accelerated. If you think of Paul and his own self-esteem, how he viewed himself because of Jesus. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. If you just changed, I can't, I won't, I'm a failure, your greatest sermon, into this. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. I can do all things because Jesus strengthens me. If you just can change that sermon in your head, I can do all things. Through, you will begin to walk into growth. That's healthy. And then... Just look at how he, how he holds other people, how his self-esteem is, is projected on other people. Philippians 1 verse 6, I am sure of this, that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. I know, I see, when you begin a journey with Jesus, he brings about that work to full completion and that nothing is ever wasted and things begin to grow in your life that he is going to cause to just Bring about health if you let him. Look at what he says in Philippians 2. Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, so now, not only as in my presence, but much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who works in you, both to will and to work for his good pleasure. God is at work in your life for his good pleasure. He enjoys working in your life. He enjoys bringing about growth in your life. Paul sets a great example of how we should view ourselves when it comes to following Jesus. I can do all things through Christ. We can all do whatever God wants us to do because we find our strength in Him. It's like, Jesus calls me to be the heavyweight champion of the world and he pulls me into the ring and then he goes and knocks the fella out before I get a chance to do that. I can do all things because of Jesus. So he calls you into something and he's already in front of you preparing the way. We said on, on Tuesday night, he doesn't call the equipped, he equips the called. He doesn't look at your academic achievements, he's not bothered. In that sense, he equips the called. I ended up going to university with not an A-level or a GCSE to my name. I was high as a kite through most of my GCSEs. I, went, I found myself doing a degree, for goodness sake. And I was, well, God, you've got me here. You better help me. And I stayed in that place every day. This is not mine. Please help. And he equipped the called. And I graduated. And I got married and I had a lovely little boy and all that kind of stuff. But I could have sat there and went, I can't do that. I can't do that. No way. But I was so fired up of Jesus, I just went at it. Jesus is going to get me through this. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I'm no longer a dirty smackhead sticking needles in my arms in Norwich public toilets. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. No, I don't know. It's just practical how it applies to our lives. Because we need to apply these truths. I am not being a motivational speaker to you this morning. This is the power of the gospel at work in your lives. He 
takes you out of your pit of filth and despair. He takes you out of the kingdom of darkness and he puts you in the kingdom of light and he kicks, a, kicks you up the backside. Go and be my child. You can do anything that you want to do because I'm for you and I'm with you and I love you. Hello. Instead of finding excuses, why can't we have a go? My greatest motto, if you don't know by now, is what's the worst that can happen? What's the worst? You have a go, you learn. What's the worst that can happen? Failure is not trying in the first. That's failure. Having a go and realising that it's not for you, or it doesn't work, or it takes a bit longer. That's not failure, that's a lesson. Failure is sitting in your sweaty pit, doing nothing. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Why can't we set new disciplines to have a go? So let's, let's get practical. We're at the start of the year, we're still at the start of the year, and we want to grow. We want to set things new in our lives, we want to have a go at some things, so let's get practical. How can we begin to improve our self-worth? They just went up, little mischievous, they were like, ah, let's go. That's great. Oscar and Rosie terrorising us. <laughs> How can we begin to improve our own self-worth? Like, we've all got strengths, okay? We all have strengths. There are things that you do that you can't do. I can't play a violin. I can't sing. One of the things that I used to carry with me was my experience with a choir at my first school. I thought I could sing. And I sang as loud as I normally do, as joyful and melodic as normal. But the, the, the choir master, Mrs. Clark, she came and she was like, this half stopped singing. I was on this half and I'm still singing. And she went, that line stopped singing and I'm still singing. And then she said, that line stopped singing. You stop singing, you stop singing, I'm still singing, you stop singing, you stop singing, until eventually I'm still singing, I'm the only one singing. She went, you, out, you can't sing. <laughs> Patsy, I can sing. She lied. <laughs> but these things, we carry them, don't we? We carry those moments. My friend always talks about being stood in a bin. That's a powerful memory of him. And I always remember this singer, boo, 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 out, you can't sing. And I really wanted to be in the choir. What was my point? We've all got strengths and weaknesses. That's why we're together. That's why Paul calls us the body. There are things that you do that I can't do. There are things that you need to be doing that no one else can do in us as a body. God has given you strengths and he's given us weaknesses. Begin to identify them. What are you good at? What is your passion? Accept them. I can't sing. It's all right. I can do other things. I can make Yorkshire puddings like no one's business. Yeah, praise God, yeah. <laughs> praise God that I'm making Yorkshire puddings and I'm not leading worship. But accept them because no one is perfect. That's why we begin when we compare ourselves. And this is why our young people are more depressed and anxious and confused because the world right now is very different to what the world that we grew up in. And they are living in constant comparison to everybody else. And they see highlight reels constantly. No, one's, no one posts bad things on social media. 
People only put their pictures on when they look the best, when they've had the best time. And our children are living like this is reality. So don't compare yourself to others. Accept your strengths, accept your weaknesses. It's okay, we're not perfect. Begin to encourage yourself and other people. Remind yourself that you can. Positive attitude is a powerful thing. And it's rooted in his love. In his love. Not your own academic achievements. In his love. Set yourself some realistic goals that you can reach. There's nothing like something to dishearten you if you set some stupid goal and you just can't attain it. Set you. Realistic goals that you can reach. And when you do, make sure you celebrate. I look at the God of the Bible and he's a God who loves feasts and festivals and celebrations. So let's celebrate. Let's celebrate. And make sure you give God the glory too. I couldn't have got through university without God by my side. And he continues to amaze me. If it wasn't for him, I didn't do it. I really didn't do it. He gave me a wife to check my grammar. He knew that my English was terrible. He says, I'll bring someone to help you. Grammar. Thank you, Jesus. Don't try to be anyone else. You can't wear their armour. And God doesn't want you to be someone else. He didn't, there she goes again. He didn't create you in the womb for you to suddenly go, I don't want to be me, I want to be someone else. He didn't want that of you. He wants you to be you. Don't try to be anyone else. We don't need you to be someone else. We need you to be yourself. And explore what you're good at. Learn to appreciate the unique person that you are. We are all fearfully and wonderfully made. Some of us more fearfully than wonderfully, but that's okay. It's playing golf with a cookie and a noodle. Be you. God loves you. We love you. And you should love you. Does that make sense? Doesn't it? And so remember that you are the biggest voice. So try to eliminate the negative voice. Do you know they reckon it takes 20 positive statements to cancel one negative statement? That's powerful, isn't it? So once we get a few of those positive things in our head, we can use them again and again and again, combating any negative speak. I walked into rehab September 2006. I graduated from rehab. I was baptised and I went off to Bible school. I was in rehab for a year and I did loads of land-based things. I, I did my maths and English CQCs. I did so many things and it gave me this portfolio. Por, por, portfolio? Portfolio, portfolio, portfolio. It, it gave me a portfolio, polo, and um, I had something in front of me that I was like, wow, I've done this. I've done my chainsaw courses. I've done my tree climbing courses. I'm safe to use a chainsaw. <laughs> Believe, uh, no, I am. I am. Shush. I, I'd done pesticide training. I, I, I could mix chemicals like no one can. I did all this stuff and it's there in a book in a in a in a folder. And I was like, this give gave me enough confidence to go, I, I can do a degree. Because God's done this, He's gonna do this. And when we begin to celebrate the wins that God's brought me this far, I can do something else. We replay that, it begins to cancel out the negative rubbish that has been put in your life. So let's remember this as we close. 
if we really want to go deeper in whatever areas we may have already identified in our lives, it's important that we get to grips with our self-esteem. Poor self-esteem is a major hindrance to spiritual growth. We make excuses for not trying and we often give up before making any progress. If we can turn our self-esteem into positive, we can really enhance our spiritual growth. And as we grow, our achievements encourage us to do more. As we grow, we gain confidence and we know we are on the right track. So rather than let our negative estimation of ourselves hinder our growth, let's allow God's estimation of us to build our self-image and our self-esteem. Let's allow God's estimation of us to encourage the spiritual growth that he desires for each one of us. He wants to see his goodness at work in your life. I will see the goodness of God in the land of the living. I will see his goodness at work in my life as long as I'm alive. And more when I'm not. It's a powerful thing. Over the next couple of weeks, we'll look at some, some habits and some goals and some other things. But it's, it's key that as we begin to dream of where we want to be in a year's time or five years' time, that we, we, we identify what we're speaking to ourselves. Have you noticed if you ever do something and 20 people tell you that it was good, one person tells you something negative, which one do you remember? Which do you remember? God wants the best for us. And it starts with who we are. We're going to close with a song now. And if you want prayer, feel free to come forward. Powerful words. I am who you say I am. Make this song your prayer as we close. For this week. For this year. Put it on your playlist. Stick it in your car. Write the lyrics on your mirror. Tattoo it on your eyelids. Do what you need to do to remind yourself that you are who he says you are. Psalm 139. You are fearfully, wonderfully made. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you, Lord, that you call us by our name, that you know us. We may have had words spoken over us in the past. We, we may speak those words over ourselves, Lord. But Lord, when we come to your word, when we come to the truth of who you are and what you've done, it kicks all of that out of the window. And your love is demonstrated in our lives. Our identity is made pure and whole by the works of Jesus on the cross. The truth that we stand on today, Lord, is that we are children of God and that we can do all things through Christ. Lord, help us make sure that we're doing it through Christ and not our own efforts. That we're doing it through Christ and not some motivational speaking. That we're doing it through, through Christ, his death, his resurrection, his ascension, and the power of the Holy Spirit. Not in our own efforts, because it will fall. Holy Spirit, propel us. Holy Spirit, accelerate us. Holy Spirit, set us free from those words, from our failures, from our mistakes. Set us free from the past and release us into the future because I am a child of God and I am who you say I am. Amen.
Amen. There's going to be some space at the front for ministry. Myself and Roger and Patsy will be here for prayer. Stay seated if you want. Stay in prayer if you want. If you're not comfortable, please just leave quietly through the door and then you can talk to your friends in, over a tea and coffee. We're just going to do some ministry in here. Stay as long as you want. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, worship team.
chosen, not forsaken. I am the 